Make it sunny. It's night time. Hey, welcome to Build It. In the past, we made a Bluetooth lock, which locked and unlocked depending on a code we sent through our phone. This was actually a pretty useful and fun project that I ended up using pretty often. But my uncontrollable urge to add Bluetooth to random things that don't necessarily need them hasn't quite been quenched yet. And so, the Bluetooth blinds are born. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own. Despite the voice activation and Bluetooth, this project is actually pretty simple. We're only going to need an Arduino Nano, a motor controller, two geared motors, a Bluetooth module, a smartphone, some buttons and resistors, and of course the willpower to explain to every single person that comes into a room why you built Bluetooth blinds. I just feel like it's kind of excessive. But think of all the time we'll save! Once we got that, we can start. The main idea behind this is that once you're in range of the blinds, you can open an app and say, Let there be light! Or whatever phrase you want, and the blinds will open. Making for a kind of cool and fun way to control stuff around your house. But if there's one thing I learned from the Bluetooth door lock video is that when your two year old phone inevitably dies halfway through the day, you're gonna wanna have some sort of backup. So we're gonna be adding buttons to let us open and close the blinds without use of a smartphone. Okay, now let's start with our build. There are gonna be four connections made between the motor controller and the Arduino. Two of these wires will be used to turn on the first motor until it was direction to spin, and then the other two will be used to turn on the second motor until it was direction to spin. This means that our motor controller is essentially just acting as an amplifier for the Arduino. The way they're going to be wired together is M1 and E1 on the motor controller get connected to pin 8 and pin 9 on the Arduino, and then M2 goes to pin 10, and E2 goes to pin 11. Now these are all the connections the Arduino needs to tell both motors which direction to spin. You might come across a motor controller that requires 3 pins to turn on a motor, and 6 in total. The third pin in this case is just an enable pin which tells the Arduino to turn the pins on. But luckily we're using a motor controller that doesn't have one of those. And now we can add our buttons. We're going to be using pull-up resistors which will allow the Arduino to see when the button's been pushed. We do this by wiring a 220 ohm resistor from the 5 volt pin on the Arduino to pin 7 on the Arduino, and then another 220 ohm resistor from the 5 volt pin to pin 4. These will act as pull-up resistors for our two buttons to tell the blinds either to go up or down. Now, we can't actually solder our buttons down yet because we first need to build our case around them, so we're going to come back to that later. And now lastly, we're going to connect our Bluetooth module to the Arduino. Now the Bluetooth module has four connections, VCC, ground, TX, and RX. The VCC pin will connect to 5 volts on the Arduino, and the ground pin will go to ground. Now, TX and RX are the serial communication pins, and will send and receive information from the phone. Now because these are serial communication pins, we can't fold them down yet, because while these connections are made, we can't upload code from our computer. So we're first going to upload our code, and then come back and solder these down. Speaking of code, we're going to need to write some. This tells the Arduino that motor pin 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be acting as outputs, pin 4 and 7 will be acting as inputs, allowing us to see when the button is pushed, and then pin 3 will be acting as an output for an LED to show us whether the device has power or not. This tells the Arduino to read its serial, which lets it see what commands we send through Bluetooth. Then over here it says if the Bluetooth device sends a letter U through serial, or if the button value is low, then turn on both motors and make them spin counterclockwise for 2 seconds. Then again over here it says if the Bluetooth device sends a letter D through serial, or if button 2's value is low, to turn on both motors and make them spin counterclockwise, and then stop after 2 seconds. Now this whole portion over here does almost the exact same thing as before, except instead of controlling both motors, it controls individual motors, allowing us to choose which blind we want open at a time. Now, of course the code is a bit more complicated than that, but I don't want to get too into it because I don't want this video to be too long. If you want some more information or a download link, check out the video description. Okay, so now that we've finished the code and uploaded it, we can start working on those wires we need to solder from before, the TX and RX from the Bluetooth module. Like I said before, the RX on the Bluetooth module needs to go to TX on the Arduino, and TX on the Bluetooth module needs to go to RX on the Arduino. So we're basically just crisscrossing the wires. Okay, so the last thing we need to do before we can give it a test is plug in a power supply to power our motor controller and our Arduino. I'm going to be using a 9 volt 1 amp power supply for the motor controller. It'll be connected by connecting the positive end of the power supply to the VCC screw terminal on the motor controller, and then the ground will connect to the ground screw terminal. Now, for the Arduino, later on I'm going to be powering it with the same 9 volt power supply, but for now I'm just going to power it with a 5 volt USB connector. Okay, so now that almost all the wiring is done, we can move on to installing our Bluetooth app. 
The app I'm going to be using is called Arduino Bluetooth Control by Broxcode, which is an app I downloaded from the App Store. Now, the reason I chose this app instead of all the other ones is because it has a terminal feature allowing us to send individual commands through, but it also has a feature allowing us to send certain commands through when we say a phrase. So for example, when I say, let there be light, it'll send the command D through opening the blinds. Now, once the app is downloaded and open, we need to pair it with our Bluetooth module. We do this by clicking this little refresh icon and looking for HC06, which is the default name of our Bluetooth device. If it asks for a password, it's either 1234 or 0000. Once it's paired, we can go to the terminal section of the app and send the command U and then D through, which should turn the motors clockwise and then counterclockwise, which we can verify with a multimeter or by plugging a motor in. Okay, so we're nearly done. Last thing to do is get the case built, then we gotta get our motors connected, then lastly, we'll just need to configure the voice control in the app, which is all really simple to do. Now, unfortunately, I still don't have a 3D printer, but I am gonna be making this out of some really tough cardboard, and I think the overall case looks pretty nice. Now, to try and make it as neat as possible, we're going to be using a printer to print out a template, and then we're going to stick it down to some cardboard and cut it out from there. Now, this part is kind of really up to you. You can follow my design if you want, but you could really build a case any way you want. Once the two overleaf things are cut out, we need to cut out a long strip which will act as our outer edge. Now, to make the cardboard bend nicely along the curve, we're going to score the cardboard every centimeter or so. This is done by cutting a shadow line down the cardboard, making sure not to cut through, allowing it to bend just a bit more. Now, once we have two long pieces that have a score about every centimeter, we can start bending them around our oval and glue them down. Once they're both glued down, we can start sticking down our circuits. Now, earlier I said don't solder down the button, and that's because now we're going to want to glue the button to a piece of cardboard. And that cardboard is going to go inside of our case just a little below the bevel, with just the tip of the button peeking out. This is so we can glue a piece of cardboard to the top of the button, which will hide the button and make it look nice, but still allow us to push down on it. And now we can finally solder the button down. One leg of the button will go to pin 7, and the other leg will go to ground, and then the other button will have one leg going to pin 4, and the other leg going to ground. Now, this is completely optional, but I added these screw terminals to the bottom of my case, which are just an extension of the screw terminals for the motors on the motor controller, just to make it a bit easier to plug and unplug motors from the motor controller. Now we need to finish cutting out the rest of the pieces for our case. This includes the top rectangle, the bottom rectangle, and then the main oval shape. Now, for the top rectangle, I actually cut a smaller rectangle inside of that rectangle, which would act as a ventilation hole for the motor controller. Although this is really not necessary, because I don't think it'll get that hot, because it's only going to be on for like two seconds at a time. But it does give it a kind of cool look, so I'm going to leave it like that. Now we need to take our top oval and cut it into three separate pieces. The top piece will go on top of our top button, the bottom piece will go on top of our bottom button, and that middle strip will have an LED glued in the middle of it, which will be our indication LED. Now let's talk about this LED for a second. The main reason it's there is to show that the device has power and is working properly. But I also kind of put it on there just to indicate to people that this is the box that opens the blinds. Now wiring it up is really simple. Pin three on the Arduino goes to the positive leg of the LED and ground goes to ground. Okay, so now we're gonna take the bottom and top piece of the oval we cut out earlier and stick it to our buttons. The top piece will go to the top button, obviously, and the bottom piece will go to the bottom button. What we're going to want to do is put a tiny bit of super glue on the top of the button and then glue the cardboard on top of that, making sure it aligns straight. Big warning, if you add too much super glue, you could clog up the button mechanism, making the button useless, meaning you're going to have to start again. So don't do that. And lastly, I'm going to cut out a small piece of paper and glue it over the LED, which kind of acts like a nice diffuser because the LED was pretty bright. And that's it, the case is done. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is we're going to take the wires and try and make them look neat and plug all of our motors into our device. Now, the orientation of the motors doesn't really matter as long as they're both plugged in the same way. So if you plug positive to positive on one motor, you've got to plug positive to positive on the other motor. Otherwise, they'll spin in different directions when you turn them on. Okay, so now we're going to connect our motors to our blinds. And to do that, we're going to use one of these little hook things that will hook into our blind mechanism. Now, I found mine on one of those stick things that turn... I have no clue what it's called and we're gonna glue that onto our motor. From there, we're gonna glue our motor below our blind and hook the hook into the blind mechanism. So now we can actually mount our box to the wall. Now I use hot glue and just glued it down, but it's so light, we can pretty much use anything. Okay, so now at this point, everything should be wired up, but looking pretty messy. Now, before we can make it look neat, we're going to want to give everything a final test. Once we can verify everything's working, we can start sticking down the wires to the side of our walls using some black electrical tape to make it look a little bit nicer. 
Okay, now for the final touches. We need to open our app and add our voice commands. We're gonna do this by clicking this icon here and then scrolling to the very bottom and clicking on voice command settings. Okay, so this is a box where we put our command that we want to be sent when the phrase is said, and then this is where we put our phrase. So for example, I'm gonna put the command you here, I'm gonna put the phrase let there be light. And then I'm gonna add another voice command below that where I put the command D and I put the phrase, let there not be light. So when I say let there be light, it will open. And when I say let there not be light, it will close. Okay, so it's finally done. But let's just take a quick walkthrough of all the features just so we know what's going on. If you want both blinds open, you can click the top button or say let there be light in the app. If you want both blinds closed, you can click the bottom button or say let there not be light in the app. If you want only one blind open, you can open the terminal in the app and send the letter K to open the left blind and I to close it. And then W to open the right blind and then L to close it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Big thanks to DF Robot for sponsoring all the parts used. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe or check out my others. See you guys next time.